Yeah, my name is Sean Simon. And um, I spoke to uh, Tracy last week and she thought uh, it'd be a good idea to, for me to join and listen in and just to see what you guys are up to. So I'm um, excited to be here. Thanks for being here. And uh, what company are you with and like what type of background? Sure. Um, currently I'm working for a, a company called Shareable Forms. It's a software startup and uh, my background, uh, 20, 20 plus years of software development, um, went through the Microsoft stack, um, went through the, um, I was working at Microsoft when they introduced Azure. So I've been in sort of in the cloud technology since, since uh, 1.0. And nice. Yeah. And then, so are you a, uh, a .NET Core guru then? Yeah, Core. Um, I've I'm, I'm been branching out lately, so uh, just really been focusing a lot on, of all things, uh, front-end development, uh, a lot of uh, React and Material UI uh, development. But, but yeah, Core is, is definitely my, uh, my wheelhouse. Uh, perfect. We were just talking about Material uh, uh, last week at our architecture meeting. Yeah, I'm, I'm in love with it. Uh, I love these libraries and frameworks. They're, um, it just, it just makes web development so much, uh, cleaner and so much more enjoyable to do now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cause we were, I worked with a little bit with the polymer project and, and, uh, material just doing some tinkering, but I, I definitely, uh, see the potential there. Um, so at the top, you'll see the Discord channel. Um, so go ahead and join the Discord channel. Um, and then if you haven't already, um, uh, add yourself to the Google Groups and I'll give you permissions to all the documents if you haven't done that. Okay, great, thank you. And there's a shared calendar and stuff like that uh, that are out there. But the main thing we do is uh, all the security is basically controlled um, for the Google Docs through that um, Google group. Okay. And just for the label on the recording, this is Monday, November 23rd, and this is the Ortelius Community Outreach Meeting. So, uh, Tracy, why don't you talk about the Persona doc? Okay. We have a, we have a contributor one that's being Let's bring it up so we can just see it. If you can do that and I'll stop I, sharing. Yeah, I'm looking for it right now. You find it? Not yet, just about. Share my entire screen. Okay. So uh, we have, uh, thank you, Tatiana, for getting this started. Nitu and uh, Tatiana worked on this, and I think there's been some um, additions and uh, comments made to it. But we've got it broken into DevOps engineers, um, cloud architects, site reliability, product manager, QA engineer, delivery manager and business development manager. Um, does anybody think that we should go any higher than a bit than um, like a, a development manager? Do we think we should go to a director? Or a CIO? I, I, would, I would suggest we skip the director and maybe just go to a CIO. Just exec? Yeah. Okay. I think that's a good idea. I know we're working on this, a similar thing in, um, IT exec, let's stick it that way. Uh, at the uh, CD Foundation, I think it's been a bit challenging. It was interesting the way the CD Foundation did it. Let me see if I can find that uh, doc real quick. They grouped people up into higher categories and then we're gonna try to st structure them out the way we did uh, the higher categories. What did they look like? Let's see if I can find it really quick. It may not be shared to me. It's nice when you get insight into the CD Foundation, all their secret documents. 
This was this came from how Armory um, set up theirs, and then they took it from Armory. But yeah, that's that's the beauty, right, of working. I don't see it right now. Um, so this? yeah, so if there's anything else that uh, we should be um, thinking about in terms of our, our personas, uh, let's just get it on there and we can continue working on it. I'll add, I added the IT exec. The, the other one that we've kind of run into is um, there seems to be these uh, governing boards of what software to buy <laughs> or, or bring in and evaluate. I like, yeah, well, not so much anymore, have we? Yeah, that was okay. like at numerics and um, core logic had the, uh, a board. Well, why don't we try to get an appointment with the, uh, one of their uh, board and see if they can uh, define who, their role. Okay. I will put that on me as a as a to do. Yeah, that would be is, Isra at uh, CoreLogic. Okay. All right. Um, Tracy reviewed, but he's not. Isra is not part of the that board, is he? Yeah. Okay. And is that how all companies do it? Is that common? Do you, are you guys finding that that there's a for any purchase of any software, there's a board you have to go through. Anybody else seeing that? Yes. Uh, now, are you talking about the organizational question? Yeah, we're talking about, Steve mentioned um, from a personas perspective that we may need to have somebody that's listed as a software purchasing board. I have not seen that. Um, I know that there uh, are um, internal groups that look through it, but I didn't know there was a, a proper role that they had a board. Uh, for example, uh, if you see what happens in a NACRIS group, there is a council known as Software Engineering Council, uh, yeah. where we have representations from key architecture and software engineering practice across the board of NACRIS group. And uh, they, you know, someone proposes something, uh, some, for example, a new tool, and that board then discusses and you know, cross questions something like you know what you presented in the CDF, and uh, everyone from the presentations came up and uh, okay gave their opinion. But they don't have a that it, it, they are also doing a job as a chief architect or an SRE or something of that sort, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. it's not a separate job. No. Okay. What about uh, somebody who is an open source? Somebody who looks at just open source within the organization. I know, like for yeah, uh, so, <clears throat> sorry, this just need to. Um, so, I do that at USA. I, I as a product manager, and then we have a team of people who do look into that. Is this open source legally compliant for us to use? Bring it into the company. Is it vulnerable? And then, if it is brought in, then. How do we make sure that once a vulnerability is find, found, who all are using this software? So we do have like a, sort of a board and the people who contributed to it are sort of, there's, there's only one person dedicated to this role. Others are sort of um, doing uh, their day job as well as this one. Okay. so. And how big is it, uh, Nitu? Is it like five people or three people? So we have like volunteers. Um, we call them voters um, based on their domain expertise. We have at least like eight to 10 of those. There oh, okay. is one, de one dedicated legal advisor who's, you know, who's sort of this me on the license part. There is one admin dedicated. And then there is four people who maintain the tool, et cetera. Okay. And then once once you um, decide on a open source tool to use, is there a specific team that's going to like implement it, or is that up to uh, each individual team? In other words, are you centralized or decentralized with the open source tools? Yeah. So once it is implement, once it is brought in, it is decentralized. Uh um, the system is actually a little bit, right now, the person, the community who requests it sort of ends up owning it. So it is decentralized. Okay. 
but they got to get in order for them to bring that tool and they have to go to that um that board or committee to get the the approval this board okay. yes yes so you know they request it and then we collect the right documentation we need and then every like legal stakeholders security stakeholders voters everybody signs off that this is good to use got it and, and what is the uh, what is the the is it for all open source or for any let's say one one project team wants to use a certain kind of editor uh do they have to go through that or anything that they purchase or is there a cutoff point so this is not regarding the purchases this is um Th this process that I'm talking about is primarily the free FOSS, free and open source. The purchase okay. uh, software goes through a separate system. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, do, do we think that we need to uh, put anything in our per personas around those roles? Because I think that the roles are within, like, the people who are on those boards, are, we've already identified them as their primary roles as card, cloud architect, et cetera. Or do we need to add a, a category? Uh, do we have something added like security engineer, some kind of thing? So we can like examine uh, the one. Yeah. True. IT exec security audit. <laughs> Good catch. I think it's going to be security. Do we have anybody from, yeah, we do have an operations role in here, don't we? I don't know if you specifically call that operations. You had SRE and I don't know if you're, architect. yeah, I don't know if you're, you're, if you're lumping like, and I think this is where you, you were seeing it from the Armory um, CDF, for, um, where you have um, SRE and yeah, DevOps engineer, uh, SRE and DevOps engineer are so similar in roles, just their, their they titles. Just, yeah, they call them DevOps, yeah. DevOps explorers is what they call them and then put everybody as a DevOps, somebody who was touching anything with DevOps we put into that category. All right. I would say that we would just want to, um, the next meeting that we cross reference what we're doing with the CDF. I will, I will find that for the next meeting. I'll be sure and find that. I, and I, for some reason it, it may be private and I don't know how it got shared to me cause I don't, I didn't see it when I went through here. And I would have looked at it recently. I have so many docs, it's ridiculous. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is press release. Well, Han, on that, oh, um, uh, so you'll see, I just added some stuff under the contributor side. Um, so need to, you started the contributor persona roles, right? There, I think I saw a GitHub issue out there. Oh, that's right. Oh. She did. Yeah. Yes, that's my work on it. And um, one of my friend also is uh, different types of personas who want to contribute, like programmer and product managers, and maybe and think from different different motivations, but if you guys have any ideas, feel free to, you know, add to the GitHub issue so that we know which personas to concentrate on. Yeah, I was, I'll work on that. I've, I did some, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll add to that. I think that we probably should have a support uh, role, some people who are contributors, people who want to do support, um, but I will, I will definitely work on that this week. Uh, mm -hmm. and, Pri and Priyajat started a form um, with yeah. like a kind of like a, a yeah. questionnaire about what yes what skill sets you have yes um, so that's in uh, a work in progress right now yeah, I've had that up because I keep thinking I'm going to go get get to it and with uh, Q <laughs> with KubeCon last week I couldn't get to it somewhere up here uh, I. Several times I went to, to check out how you built the form, and I was like, oh, I got to talk to somebody at KubeCon. So glad that's done. That was 
kind of a waste of time, to be quite honest. Sad. What happened to KubeCon? Okay, next. Uh, so we got the logo. Um, we're on track uh, for, I know it's Peters is her last name, but what's her first name? Sarah. Sarah Peters. So she's going to be working on that. Um, I, yeah, I spoke with her uh, a week ago Friday, and she is and finishing up um, some school stuff, and then she's going to work on it for us. And it's going to be the alien with the, the finger pointing down. Um, yes, with the dog in the, in the spaceship. So just to whoever's uh, new to the group, um, we ended up with the alien and dog theme because uh, – Ortelius came out of New Mexico and we're famous for UFOs. Um, so, and also the, the play of mascot is a dog. So we have a lot of dogs around the office and uh, aliens and around. Um, so that's how we ended up with uh, the alien and dog. And also we found that um, the, uh, the images really catch on and people flock to them for, um, wanting to get swag around those things. Yeah, they created a Jenkins um, uh, alien butler for uh, New Mexico. And uh, at the last, when we were in person at the last DevOps World, they handed them out and th that went first. Everybody wanted the alien. So we figured it was a, a good indicator of something that people do get attracted to. And we, we gotta have some kind of mascot. So why not an alien? Why can't Ortelius be an alien? <laughs> So if any of you wanted the, the backstory on it, uh, just look up Roswell, New Mexico, and you'll get, there's all sorts of TV shows on us. All right, the next one is a CDF update. Um, I did see that the um, pull request, uh, Dan Lorick did merge our pull request, so that's good news. Um, and you, Tracy, why don't you go on to the press release now? And here's the press release document. Uh, it'll go out. Uh, I, I've already, we've already worked on the one for the CDF that's coming out. I've got to put ours together. It'll come out December the 8th. And I think we should do our donuts and beer party on December the 8th, uh, since that is the day that they're rolling it out. Uh, so what, I'll put it. What day is it? December the 8th of Friday, Tuesday or something? It's the middle of the week. I don't think they would do something late. She, she wanted to make it prominent. It's yeah. a Tuesday, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Donuts and beer on Tuesday the eighth. Yes. December eighth. Do we need to bring by Asin? What was that? <laughs> I was asking, do we need to bring Asin the donuts and the beer, or uh, we'll have virtually teleport? It's going to be a virtual <laughs> a virtual celebration. <laughs> BYOB and BYOD. <laughs> I'll figure out a time. It'll probably be the, around the same time. In fact, December 8th might be. A general. Yeah, let's see what falls on December. It might be one of our Tuesday meetings. It's going to be a meeting day anyway, because I'm going to schedule meetings every Tuesday. Uh, yep, yeah, it's not. It's on the off week, so we'll do it uh, at the same time. I'm going to schedule uh, the Tuesday meeting for every month. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to schedule the Tuesday meeting for every Tuesday and have that uh, where the website team can start working on alternate Tuesdays. Okay, so that would be a, a website. It'll, it'll be a website meeting, yeah. Got it. Um, we, we, we've got, uh, some of you have put in your quotes, um, Siddhar, thank you, Sasha, thank you, and Tatiana, thank you. <clears throat> I thought Sasha's was pretty good, or Tilius would do for microservices what the Dewey Decimal System did for library books. <laughs> totally he was good. very geeky on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so please, uh, add your, um, add your quote. Everybody's quote will be included in the, um, in, in our press release. And that will go out at the same time. So there'll be a a, a, a Ortelius community press release and, and a CDF press release, and they'll go out at this, on the same day. So okay, can we share the link for that in the chat? For the spoiler doc. Uh, yeah, Tracy, grab the link to that doc and throw it in chat. This is the one thing I hate about Google. There's like no dashboard uh, that's shared for all the docs. You know, I wonder if we should create a Slack, um, a Discord channel just for docs. 
and with all the links to it. Oh, we can use Box if you want. Like, it's pretty good for like sharing docs and all those things. Which one? Box, Box. Oh, Box. box. That's a good idea. Well, a lot of these are um, uh, just Google Docs, because so we can edit them all at the same time, um, which comes in handy. I don't know if uh, Box is more for moving Word docs around, right? So like box has the pick and like uh, i'm not sure like in our organization we use box so like we have the capability to add uh, edit our word excel powerpoint the microsoft power online and you in, in box itself oh okay so you can do collaboration of the of a single doc yeah uh, sure right right like once you're like once they like, same similar like one one person editing you can see the same thing like you have in google docs like who's the where's the cursor for the bigger person and all those things okay i'll have to check it out there's another one that I saw that one of the CDF uh, integrations was using was a uh, hack, hack down or something like that. It was a markdown that you could do. Um, everybody can edit the markdown at the same time. It was all right. It, it wasn't as, as seamless as like a Google Docs, but let's, uh, I'll check on the, the box. Otherwise, we can what we can do that we can have a Google Drive folder created like with all the docs separate out for a particular uh, group, and we can share that link. Like it's similar same same thing as Box. Like you can edit the same thing. It's just Box is just like provides a folder kind of hierarchy. So you can we do the same thing with Google, Google Drive, and we can share that folder for our project. Okay. Sounds do good. The same. All right. May go that route since we have the security already tied in. Um, anything else on that, Tracy? Uh, nope, I don't think so. I just have to make sure I have to get my announcement out for our donuts and beer. I'm hoping that we can get some of the folks on our um, technology oversight committee. And we had exciting news on that. Um, uh, Jeremy Davis from Red Hat, he's a chief architect at Red Hat, is going to join our Ortelius TOC. So we have now somebody from Red Hat, uh, somebody from Google, and somebody from Netflix, which is amazing. And uh, well, just to finish out who else is on there. So this is the um, the high level technical um, committee. Uh, they meet once every quarter ish. Yeah. We're, we'll have to have. <laughs> well, in the future, we'll have proper like uh, uh, voting for doing that. But they were uh, an, our initial t board that we reached out to. There's a person by the name of Doug Orr. Doug Orr is famous in the Google world because he was the uh, director who um, ran the program to build uh, uh, Kubernetes. And he probably coded most of Kubernetes, to be quite honest. He's very quiet. I can't imagine him being a manager. But when he, when he speaks, everybody listens, and he's always spot on. Um, another person, his name is Tim Kelton. They're a big uh, Google uh, user. Uh, he used to work for a company called Descartes. Now he works for a company called, um, uh, I can't remember. He, they're building um, autonomous, autonomous uh, uh, driving uh, for trucks. Device. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, Christopher Palmer, who is a u end user uh, from Unisys. Um, and uh, I think I'm forgetting one person. Boeing. Boeing. I know I can't think of his name right now. <laughs> oh. Um, but uh, I'm going to pull together a TOC meeting very shortly here, and I'll make sure that all of you have a, a invite to that meeting so you can uh, come. And I we usually record them and post them. But I think that we need to organize that in a different way in the future, and that's something we can discuss during our general community meeting how we want to organize the TOC board. And one last thing was I started playing around with uh, Twitch and how we can integrate that in. Um, so it's, it's, I've seen some of the groups use it, um, uh, but it's basically more like a webinar. It's more one way uh, than collaborative like we have here. Um, but there is a way to feed Zoom into a Twitch feed um, so there, there is that ability uh, at that level uh, as well. But I think um, there are some decent poss possibilities for us to use it. Um, any new um, trendy things like that, let us know, because I think the trendier that we are, um, 
that we'll be able to get more contributors and be uh, have the cool factor going on. That was yeah, all I, I had. So if anybody wants to take on Twitch and learn Twitch, uh, step up. That's going to be a, uh, I know Steve probably has limited in time that he can spend on it, but that could be a fun project for someone to um, pick up Twitch and just build our Twitch channel and start managing the Twitch channel. I don't know if any of you, any of you have done it before. I have not done it before. I can uh, you know, have a call with Steve and probably understand it. Uh, but yes, uh, yes, at the moment to understand what it is and can I contribute? Yeah, I think that, for example, um, we could, I've thought about uh, YouTubing live all of these uh, recordings, which is fine. Um, but I think Twitch is probably, it's, it's an interesting medium because it allows you to produce your meetings in the way that you might see it on TV. Like when we watch the news and they've got things in different corners and you can, you know, so you can highly produce it. So, for example, when Steve did his uh, kind of training last week, he could have had a, him in one corner and he could have had his keyboard in another corner and he could have had everybody who was in the meeting along the bottom. Um, so it's just it's a better platform for producing it. You do have to still host it and record it if you want to post, you know, put it up on YouTube, which is how the CDF uh, Twitch channel is working, and they're getting um, some good traction on it. It just is a nicer way of doing the uh, having a meeting, especially if you're doing any kind of training or uh, deeper discussion, code sharing. There's companies that are using it for just watching each other code and talking about problems that they're having, that kind of thing. Like I said, I'm willing to see what it is and happy to help, but you know, if it works out for me. Yeah, reach out to me uh, and we'll we'll figure out what, what it all means. <laughs> I think it'll be fun when we have a nice Twitch channel out there. And on that note, um, uh, Parashat is working on uh, getting some of the initial training videos uh, started. So we'll, we're going to have uh, two sets. Um, one will be the contributor side, like how to do a pull request uh, type of training. Another one is on the uh, the using Ortelius um, side. So we'll have both sides of, of training videos. Because um, one of the things in our, our mission statement is is really to, to be a place for people to come and learn how to do open source, because it is intimidating. And that will fit well with our personas. We can, you know, um, target it that these personas can take these type of trainings. This is relevant to them. Oh, yeah, perfect. We'll have to make sure that when we... Uh, do the content for them that we're overlapping with the, some of the personas. Cause like when I do a training, I just do a generic. <laughs> so we'll definitely have to focus on uh, persona driven. I think so. I think that's, a see, I, I'm a developer. I always forget about the end user and do what I want. <laughs> oh, look at you with your baby. Oh, <laughs> it's early. It's early. It's early. <laughs> All right, I think that covers it. We will be having our architecture meeting on Thursday, even though it's Turkey Day in the US, it's early, it's okay. Um, we can we can do a holiday and do a meeting at the same time. I'm hoping that um, Owen will be there and he can give us an update on any of the website. I did make some uh, changes to the website. Um, so if you get a chance, I think some of you may have already uh, pointed out a few typos that I had, I fixed. Um, but we are working on a page that is for contributors and, and a kind of a how-to page. Uh, oh, so on, on that um, front, one thing I've noticed is we're getting um, some sprawl around the contributor stuff. So we have um, how to contribute like in the uh, readme on the Ortelius um, repo. And then we have another set of how to contribute in the user guide. And then we have another set in the, um, on the web page. So we're getting some sprawl there. I think we need to, to wrangle in. So just makes think, life easier to, to update once. Yeah, so where do you think that we should have the majority of I, that? I think in the user guide. Okay. The That's reason my. Why I, the reason why I'm hesitant is because you guys had it and I didn't even know it was out there. <laughs>
Well, and this is where the um, the new website would come into play, where we could, um, if we, if the website's uh, Git based, then we can do it off of that instead of the user guide. So you say it's on the website in the user guide. And in the README at the uh, Git repo level. Okay. Uh, how about if I take on the task of making sure at least all the information in is the same for now? Yeah, I think we can. Um, uh, we could probably move what's in the user guide out into somewhere else. Okay. But I just did notice that we're getting some sprawl going. Or I can just get rid of that whole page and just point it to the user guide um, and update the user guide. Either way. Okay. Like I said, I think I think um, once we get to a Git-based website, like a um, it'll be easier. So I think taking it from the user guide, moving it to the website um, will work in the long term. And then we could just make the readme and the or uh, this repo just a link over to how to contribute instead of calling it out specifically. Okay. So you want me to, um, Tracy will move, will delete the website contributor page. No, you're going to delete the and user guide. Link it to the user guide page. No, reverse that. Really? Because it's yes. easier for people to contribute now to the user guide page. I understand, okay. but once we get the, the the site switched, <laughs> once we get the site switched, then everybody will be able to do it. There's not a lot of changes to the contributor stuff. Okay, so you want me to delete the user contributor guide and make sure that the README and the contributor page are in sync? Yes. Okay. Okay, I guess that does it. Thank you, everybody. Get your, uh, get your, get your uh, uh, quotes in. And that, you know, that's another thing we need to talk about with is I would like to find out uh, and I'll ask this in the community meeting but I would like to do a page of our contributors on our website so uh, on uh, next uh, Tuesday we'll talk uh, about that um, and maybe I can come up with a way of getting that information easy uh, if you want to have your uh, information out on the as a contributor on the website and I want to get it done before the 8th So I might send an email to everybody and say, hey, if you're interested in having your info added to the website, send it here and I'll uh, build a page. Uh, this I'm just sharing a quick link with you right in the Zoom chat. We can do something like in that way, fashion, like regarding our team. Just go to our, our team section on this particular page. That's exactly what we're uh, we're talking about. Perfect. Okay, asking for bio and photo. All right, I guess that takes care of it then. All yep, right. I'll be, I'll be quiet so nothing else comes up. <laughs> All right. All thank right. you, everybody. Have a All good right. week. Thank you. Thank we'll you. talk thank to you on you. Thursday. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.